Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous plays and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. I wonder what's keeping that wandering farmer you married. He isn't a farmer yet, thank you. He better be. He'll have to bring home a new chicken if he doesn't hurry. He'll probably just bring home the other half of the ticket he almost got the last time he went driving. (laughs) Just because you're not along, I suppose every state trooper between here and Boston will be waiting to pounce on poor David. He knows we're waiting, and he's probably in a great hurry. That's just when you get tickets. Hurry? He's probably dawdling along, pretending he's driving a tractor. He's driving a tractor very hard, Mama. My experience with them is limited, but offhand... I think I'd prefer a Rolls Royce. I think I'd prefer a Rolls Royce, too. And it wouldn't even have to be a Rolls Royce. That's not very lucid, but it's perfectly clear. David didn't say anything about tractors last night. Does every farm come with a tractor? Well, some come with mules, I believe. David didn't say anything about mules, either. He hadn't seen the farm last night. But Roger told him all about it. And Roger didn't say anything about mules. I don't think they'd be what Roger would notice. All David knew about was architecture. Grand old doors and a floor that's a hundred years old. Mama, what's so wonderful about an old floor? Well, the beams are probably hewn by hand. Oh, is that it? Why didn't somebody tell me that long ago? Well, what's so wonderful about beams that are hewn by hand? Well, they'd have the edge marks on them. Well, that's terrible. Can't they do anything about it? Well, some people like them. Some people like living on farms. Like it or not, a lot of people do it. Well, a lot of people live in cities. I don't see why we can't be two of them. There are a great many advantages to living in the country, Claudia. It's a much better place to bring up children. You seem to be planning a lot of that. I do see what's wrong with the city for bringing up children. I was brought up in the city. Then there's a feeling of permanence, a pride of knowing where you belong, the dignity of owning the land you walk on, and the satisfaction of putting back into the earth more than you take out. You're a fine one to talk. If it's so grand, why didn't you try it yourself? I might have. You mean you and Father... We talked about it. Do you really think you know everything anyone ever talked about? I would if they talked about it to me. You're very lucky to have a husband who talks to you about anything at all. Some men would have just bought the farm and told their wives about it the day before they moved in. David couldn't do that. He hasn't even seen the farm. He has now. I hope he had a good time. I hope he won't be terribly disappointed. If he's disappointed in this one, I'm sure there'll be another. Another? I understand that most of the country around there is covered with farms. Oh, I hope he won't be terribly upset if this one isn't what he thought it was going to be. At least he'll know enough to be disappointed. You don't know how most men get about houses. Nobody told me that either. They think houses are something they were born knowing about. Like pocket knives or how to whistle. I can whistle, too. I know. I taught you. Thanks. Most men buy a house, and then after they've carefully installed their family in it, they get the idea that they could have built it much better than it was built in the first place. That must be a lot of fun. They proceed to treat the house as though they hate it. They rip everything apart and try to start all over again from the beginning. Oh, David wouldn't do that. When it comes to houses, your husband isn't a man. He's an architect. Besides, Mama... I don't think David really wants to move up to the country right now, any more than I do. He's just going to look. He's taking an awfully long look. That's a good sign, Mama. If he really liked it, he'd have hurried back to tell us all about it. Well, you better hurry back and take a good look at that chicken of yours. Oh, I practically forgot I had a chicken. Fine farmer's wife you'd make. All right. All right. Well, if it isn't little boy Blue... How are the meadows and the corn? Hello, Mother Hubbard. How's your cupboard? The cupboard is bare, except for one dried-up old chicken. A fine way to talk about your daughter. David, is that you? Farmer David. I can't hear you. I didn't say anything. I'll be there in a minute. I'm just basting the chicken. What are you basting it to? I did hear that. 
and I'll ignore it. Try and ignore this. Oh, I can't. But maybe if you gave me another kiss, I could ignore that one. No good. If you can't ignore the first time around, it doesn't count. Isn't oh. that so, Mother? I have turned my back, and I'm not listening. I think Mother's getting very old-fashioned, don't you? Mm, she'd like us to call each other by our last names. She's an awful stick in the mud. You're a stick in the mud. Did you fall in some bottomless Connecticut marsh? Do you know what time it is? Is it six yet? It is seven yet. Is dinner ready? Are you? Been ready for hours. Oh, sure. You always eat in your overcoat. They're getting fuzzier in this hotel every day. Next thing, they want me to wash my hands. Mama, he looks disappointed to me. If he isn't now, he will be when he sees that chicken. Should I ask him what the house was like? Whose husband is he? I don't think I ought to. Now that you've made me take off my coat, I don't feel like eating. See, Mama, he is disappointed. Can't we just sit around and talk for a while? I wish Roger hadn't said how wonderful it was. You're a fine wife, the two of you. Don't you even ask me how the house was? Did you have a nice day? It was a terrible day, as you could see for yourself, looking out the window. Well, maybe the house would look nicer on a nice day. It would? Uh, There's no doubt about it. Maybe you shouldn't make your mind up all at once. Maybe you should take another look. I don't need another look. Oh, now, is it fair to Roger to make up your mind just on one look? He made up his mind on one look. The sun was shining when he saw it. I don't need the sun to make up my mind. Well, that settles that. Don't sit down here, David. Our poor little chicken is waiting. Oh, I feel like sitting down. Oh, David, you mustn't be so disappointed. There are lots of other houses. Out there, Mama. So I've been told. Mother, you've been misinformed. There isn't any other house. Uh, David, that is just silly. That doesn't sound like... You mean you like it? Hmm, something of the sort. You think I'll sit down, too? Tell us about it, David. It isn't just liking it, Claudia. It's something beyond that. It's a feeling I got when I saw it. Perhaps the same sort of feeling I I had that day I took the sender out of your eye. The feeling that this is the way things are going to be. Without any warning at all, suddenly I could, I could see everything. David, I was me, and this is only a house. Tell us more about the house, David. It's a pure salt box. We don't have to go all the way to Connecticut to get a salt box. We can have one right here. Well, they call them that because they resemble old-fashioned salt boxes. Oh. This house was built around 1760. Not, not all of it, of course, but the main part, the salt box. I like the name, salt box. It's cute. It isn't cute. It's the valid appellation for that particular type of architecture. One side of the roof is longer than the other. Why? I don't know exactly why. Sounds a little lopsided to me. I don't know that I think it's such a good idea. It's been good enough for the last 190 years, practically. Well, they are charming sometimes. This house is... It, it's, it's more than charming, Mother. You can, you can look at it and feel very close to the people who built it. You can see how hard it was for them to build at all. You, you'd say they, they had nothing to build with, and yet they built more than just a shelter. It has, it has a line, and grace, and dignity. Does it have much land? Land? Well, only about 80 acres. 80 acres? That's an awful lot, isn't it? Or is it? How, how big is an acre? There are 640 acres to the mile, the square mile, that is. 640? Is that a lot? That's a lot. This is about one-eighth of that. It's about as big as a... Oh, ten big city blocks. Ten blocks, David, that's tremendous. It's a farm, Claudia, not a window box. And what land? Not not marshy bottom land, but, but a... Beautiful, beautiful slope with a, a hill and a grove of walnuts on the summit and grazing land on the slopes and three farm fields and a meadow that breaks off halfway down. David, you walked all over it? I didn't drive a tractor. On a day like this? If we lived on a farm, you'd be getting your feet wet all the time. I certainly would. There's a gravity spring and a brook. Does the brook babble? Today it was shouting. Would you farm it, David? Well, not for cash at first. We just put in a, a few garden crops, but of course we'd want a herd. Cows? What do you think? Elephants? Could we have elephants? Oh, well, not just as first. We mm, could. I like elephants. David, you're really serious, aren't you? About everything except the elephants. Tell us more about the house. Well, Mother, in the 
In the main part of the house, the beams are all the original beams. With ads marked. I should say so. Oh. The four floor planks are, are the old planks. Uh, you know, they, they, they have that, that tawny color that they get as, as though they've been polished for years like an old shoe. And that doesn't sound so pretty. Some of the planks are even pegged. They're not nailed. They must be practically falling apart. Does it have any stairs? Untouched. I think the stairs are the best part of the house. Uh, David, uh, are you going to have to do much to it? Well, I've been working it out in my mind on the drive home. We won't have to do too much. How much is that? Well, now, we'll want to make an extra room out over the kitchen and back for a nursery uh, eventually. A nursery? You might uh, put our six sets of twins in a barn, but then how would you face the neighbors? Seriously, <laughs> David, isn't that going to be a big job? Not so big. The important thing is the studying of the first floor, and it's strong enough to take it. I look. I know you look, but isn't there always something that you find out about too late? Not if you're a good architect. And, Mother, we do have to have a nursery. Good girl. Then, of course, some of the barns aren't in such fine condition. Barns? Certainly, for the herd. I want to lay in a concrete floor. A concrete floor? Isn't that a terrible job? Mama, David knows what he is doing. Thank you, Claudia. You see, I think we can lay it right in without disturbing the structures themselves. They, they're resting on a stone foundation. But you can't be sure. Why not buy a barn that has a concrete floor? Mama, David is an architect. But he's beginning to sound just like a man. And then there are some small things we'd want to do right away. After a while, we could... Uh, we could tackle some of the others. What sort of small things? Oh, a few more windows in the annex and an extra bathroom, but we could wait for that. And we'd probably want to make a few changes in the heating system. But if you we... have to do all that, why buy this house? Maybe you can find a house you won't have to do anything to. If you saw the house, Mother, you'd have more answer than I can give you. Besides, it isn't as though David were just anybody who do doesn't know about houses. Have you changed your mind about farming, Mrs. Norton? You've changed your tune. What tune? You mean, what mine? Mama means that a moment ago you didn't sound so enthusiastic. And now you sound as though you love the idea. Do I? It's just what I'd hoped. That you'd be as excited as I am. And I think we can move in by spring. Move in? That's what I said. But David... No, I didn't mean to sound as though I loved it at all. Leave here, I couldn't. What? Make up your mind. Oh! Uh, darling, darling, wait till you see the house. Uh, there's no hurry. I wasn't thinking about the house. I just then remembered my chicken. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Have you noticed how much easier it is to get Coca-Cola nowadays? Why, that familiar red cooler is even finding its way into your favorite food store. Now, when you're buying a carton or a case to take home, you can stop in the midst of marketing to enjoy the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs> 